Good morning. Very interesting presentation. Uh, got to talk to that guy. He's got some good ideas. Anyway, I want to introduce you to Medical 21, the work that we're presently doing in the field of cardiovascular surgery, primarily uh, cabbage. Patient comes in, chest pain. What are we going to do? Uh, typically, uh, they will talk to him about the possibility of doing uh, some sort of uh, picture taking, see where the blockage might be, if it's caused by a blockage, and finally say to him, well, Charlie, it looks like you have some blockages and we're going to try to open up those blockages with uh, a stent, a medical uh, cage, a little metal cage in which we will put it in, uh, open it up with a balloon, et cetera, et cetera. However, there are times, and I'm going to try to figure out how do we go backwards on here. There we go. There are times, however, when either the, we were not able to open up those blockages, or more commonly, after we put a stent in, the stent restenosis, or there are other lesions or other blockages which we have to take care of later on. And we'll say, Charlie, you know, we can't do the stents anymore on you. We're going to do bypass surgery. Bypass surgery is where we take a, um, a vessel out of your legs, out of your arms, off your breasts, and put them in various parts that will allow us to go around those blockages. I wish I had a pointer on here, which I don't, or do I? No, I don't have a pointer on here. Oh, yes, we do. New technology. There we go. Uh, in which we'll take a vessel out of your leg and go around this blockage that you see here, and that's called a single bypass. In about 95% of the cases, we will go to your breast, which is over here where your nipple is, okay, and we will take the vessel off of there, this internal mammary artery, and we will go around another blockage over here, which is on the LAD, which is also known as the Widowmaker. That procedure is done approximately 800,000 to a million times per year on a worldwide basis. However, the patient will receive approximately three or four grafts. We say an average of three and a half grafts. Now, we're not walking around with a half a graft, but we're just trying to say that we're doing this about three and a half times every time we do a procedure. So annually, over two and a half million grafts are done. Now, when you compare that with other things, particularly things that I've been involved with, uh, such as pacemaker, heart valves, and stents, um, you can see that doing two and a half million grafts per year leads to an enormous market of about $7 billion. Compared to others, not too bad. We all know about pacemakers and heart valves and stents, so we're not too bad of a market. A market that has been tried for quite a long time. What happened? Did I shut off here? Can you hear me okay? Okay. A market that has been uh, pursued for quite a long time, but no one's been able to come up with an artificial graft. A couple of years ago, a few years ago, the University of Iowa approached me and said, Manny, we have a material that we would want you to take a look at. It's a material that we feel you can make artificial grafts, percutaneous valves, and things like that. We looked at it, and it was cellulose. I came home, and I said, hey, I'm working with cellulose. My daughter says, Dad, that's the most common molecule in the world. I didn't know that. Did any of you guys know that? I didn't know that. And we found a way to use synthesized uh, cellulose and be able to make it into a device, a tube, that uh, would be made in such a way so that it would be an inert material, thromboresistant, very compatible to the body, particularly in view of the fact that we have uh, some cellulose in our body. We were able to make it permeable. And we ended up with a concept of making an artificial graft. And our concept is not so much to say, hey, we got a better way of making a, 
a saphenous vein or internal mammary artery. No, 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 that's not our goal. Our goal is quite simple. Can we eliminate the need to harvest vessels out of the body? If you've ever seen bypass surgery, you know what I mean when you tear open a leg, tear open an arm, and try to get vessels out of it. And we have done that. This is how it looks. This is an animal implant showing our device uh, being able to take the torturous uh, paths and, uh, and be able to uh, do this. In fact, this particular procedure was done off pump. Here's another procedure, again, done off pump. Uh, so it minimized the amount of trauma to, to the body. Now these are both, of course, are animal implants, free clinical testing. And the image on the right-hand side is an angiogram. And if there's any physicians in the audience, particularly surgeons, they say, Manny, that's a lousy one. Why did you make the, the graph so long? I said, we purposely made it long just to show that the way we make this graph, we can make a graph without kinking. We've, been, we've had these uh, graphs as long as over 90 days in animals. And in fact, when I first presented it to one of our, our evaluators, they said, Manny, I've never seen a graph last more than three days. And you got already out to 90 days. All right, so our company uh, is one of the companies that I have formed in the past. Uh, if you've listened to our, our presentation last night, you probably got a little glimpse of some of the things that we have done in the past. But we've always had an enjoyable, uh, uh, not always, but most of the time we've been quite successful in developing major products. And this will probably be our biggest product we've ever developed in the past. In addition, we recently signed an agreement with the Mayo Clinic in which they will help us in animal studies, clinical studies. Their goal is to have the first in man. And in fact, uh, some of the skills and what else would you call it, skills of working with the FDA to help us get this product through the FDA because their goal is to be first in man because they still want to show the world that the Mayo Clinic is number one. So as we take a look at Medical 21 from an investment point of view, bearing in mind that right now we are trying to raise a minimal amount of about three to five million dollars to take us into our first humans, you have to take a look and say, well, darn it, it's a damn big market. Secondly, we're improving the quality of patients for the life I mean, the life of the, ah, improving the life of the quality of the patient. And uh, by not harvesting these vessels out of the legs and arms, we introduce about ten to $20,000 savings per procedure. You realize that once you have bypass surgery, you just don't go home and say, hey, not bad. You're probably going to still continue getting, you know, patient care, uh, rehabilitation, how to walk, and various different things as well. We can save one or two days on intensive care. There's a lot of savings that we can have, not to mention that you're going to have a happier patient. We have done these things before. We have the leadership to run companies of major sizes. Uh, we've, we've been very successful. And I think that with my, our team, which is made up of advisors and scientists, uh, this is a project that we can do. We have the key opinion leaders throughout the world who have known us. We work with the same physicians in which we introduce the, the lithium pacemakers, the, the bileaflet valves, and things like that. We work with the same people. Uh, in this um, slide right here, We're teaching Switzerland, UK, Spain, Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia. We work with them all places. We all have in the newspaper, we read about KTAR. Over here's the, uh, the chief of cardiac surgery at the university in KTAR. 
and I am proud to say and pleased to say that I've had the opportunity to work with the, with the, with the big guys. Uh, here is uh, Professor Lillehei, uh, who did the first open heart surgery, uh, Professor uh, Christian Barnard, who did the first heart transplant, and uh, Dr. Zudi, who was one of the first people to cool down the heart. They were all in my home enjoying a cup of coffee and a few other drinks. Thank you very much.